Okay, so yeah, the recording has started. Welcome to your session, I think it's session 14, <clears throat> uh, where we're going to do activities linked to study unit six and seven, uh, which are required for you to do your assignment three, which is due, I think on the 21st or something like that, I can, on the 30th. Um, if I'm not mistaken, on the 31st or 30th, somewhere last week, next week. So we're going to continue. Uh, I'm not going to do any recapping. Is The only recap that I will do is based on how you read the table um, by using the probabilities. You just need to always remember that and, um, <clears throat> and also remember the formulas because normal distribution and sampling distribution have almost close to look alike formulas, uh, but we, we use the same table as well. So do you have any question, comment, query, uh, suggestion, concern? Now is your time. You have, let's use these two more minutes that are uh, while we wait for other people to join to raise any concern, question or query. Anything? Are you happy? Are you winning? Am I muted? Are you guys hearing me? Can hear you, ma'am. You can hear me. Or you just deciding not to talk to me? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, on my side, I'm seeing flames uh, because I have lots of assignments. So I'm just waiting to finish this class and then I'm going to take my other chance of assignment too. And then, yeah, I'll try and catch up. It's long videos. I normally have to take long breaks, but yeah, it's a lot of pressure on me. I've, I'm trying to cut down also on the assignment, on the other modules, because I had uh, five for each semester, so now it's basically 10 because of what happened. Oh yeah, because of the super semester thing, so then it means you're doing your first semester and second semester in one year. Yes, and now it's a whole lot of work. Yeah, okay. Others, are you guys happy? Are you fine? Are you coping? Talk to me. Hi, yes. Um, I had a problem with exercise 10 from the previous session. I just can't seem to get the right answer. I don't know what is it that I'm doing wrong or is it fatigue or what, I don't know, because I tried to redo it all over and over, but I still can't get um, an answer from the given options. I get a totally different answer. Is it for uh, the assignment? No, it's or not for the for assignment. One of the activities that you are busy yes. with. Yes, from ses session yeah. 13 that we did. Okay. But when you are doing it and you are stuck, why can't you ask? Well, I know, I just thought because today we're going to do, be doing exercises, um, I will just ask them now so we can all do it together so I can see where I actually yeah. went wrong. Yeah. But you know that your learning is your own responsibility. You cannot wait for others. Yes, I do. You know that mm -hmm. I said anytime you work through something and you're struggling, you can always post on my UNISA or on WhatsApp and ask for help. Because I think you guys, you wait until until we have a class and you hope and pray that things will be 
uh, will will be unpacked and you will understand. That's not how meds work or stats work. If you don't practice on a weekly basis, you're going to forget. And every week we're going to introduce new things, new concepts, new calculation, new formula that you also need to remember when you go to write the exam. And if you don't practice, if you don't ask questions when you get stuck, you're never going to move from where you are because you will be stuck there. So I will encourage you to constantly ask questions, constantly post. When you're doing your activities and you are not sure about the answer, just post. Don't care about what other people are seeing, what you're doing. It doesn't matter. It's not about them. It's about you. Post and ask for help. Let's help you so that you can move on from where you are to the next uh, the next place. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, take responsibility for your own learning. That's what I, I'm trying to get at. Okay. <clears throat> yes, uh, I, I, me too. On the other end, I'm struggling because it's with all the work pressure and uh, I mean, probably I'm basically working 24/7. It's difficult getting to, and I know, like you're saying, it's our only responsibility. It's just that time is not on my side right now. So I'm struggling to to catch up with all the activities. On a Saturday, the two hours I get for for the class is uh, it's 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 basically the only free time I get. Other than that, it's it's constantly work, 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 and it's, and it's difficult. But yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying my side. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Aish. Yeah, but you just need to also make sure that you find time during your busy schedule to to go and do a revision of the work. Yeah, well, but with, with, with COVID, it's difficult because it is, you know, uh, the casino is open and with the increase in cases, the contact tracing and all that, it makes it it's really difficult. But yeah, I'll, 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 I'll find my time. Okay. All right. <laughs> Um, so let's continue with what we're supposed to be doing. So we're going to spend a little bit of time on the normal distribution and then we move to uh, to the next section. So uh, before you start answering the question, you must always remember those things that you need to know. Uh, Oh, sorry, my mouse is not, my thinking, my pen is not active. You must remember that the, the table contains the probability of less than. We use the value on the table. For the probability of Z greater than a value, we use 1 minus the value we find on the table. For the probability of between, we use the probability of Z B, which is the second one, minus the probability of the first one. You remember all those things, ne? Do you still remember how to use the table? Then, because this is normal distribution, you also, when you calculate your Z, you remember to use the formula Z is equals to X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. With that, try and answer this question without my help. Since we're doing revision, you have, because it's Z score, you have three minutes. If you have any question, you can ask. And remember to use the chat.
Uh, let's go for a raw score of 19. Any hint, ma'am? Raw score? Please? So you, I see two responses. One says, uh, it says option three is the answer. Do you all agree? Uh, that's what I also get, uh, yes. Okay, let's see if option three is the answer. So we know the formula that we need to use. Z x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So what is our x? Uh, Nineteen minus the mean twenty-five and standard deviation of five. So 19 minus 25 divide by 5. It's minus 2. Minus 1.2. Minus 1.2. So then it means option 3 is the correct one. Is which one of the following statement is correct one? This one you can shout it out. Option three. Option three, the distribution that has the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one is called the standard uh, standard normal distribution calculate the value of x that's what they need you to calculate what is x Using that formula, calculate the value of x. You have three minutes. When you get the answer, you can post it on the chat and we can come back after three minutes to check if the answer, we all agree.
Are we winning? Yes. Are we done? I think five is really yes. enough. Was more than enough. Okay, so let's answer this. We are given most of the information. Our Z. Our Z is minus two. Our X is what we're looking for. Our mean is 30 divided by our standard deviation is 5. So we need to multiply 5 by minus 2. We are left with X minus 30 and Minus 2 times 5, it's minus 10, and we move 30 over to this side, it becomes plus 30. 30 minus 10, or minus 10 plus 30, is the same as 20, which is option 5. And three people agree from the chat. Next question. This has a dot there. That is a dot. If the score is given as Z of 1.96 and the distribution of X is normally distributed with the mean of 60, and the standard deviation of six, then find the value of X. So you still need to do Z is equals to X minus mean divided by the standard deviation. Find the value of the X value, which is the raw score.
Are we winning? Four people say it's option one. Is there anyone who's still working? Need extra more time? Okay. Silence means everything is fine. So what is our Z value? I think I said today I'm not going to be talking. You guys, you need to be talking. I'll be your transcriber. The Z is 1.96. 1.96 equals? X minus 50. Minus? 60. Is? Divided by 6. Okay. Then you multiply, you take over the 6 to the other side and multiply by 1.96. So you say 1.96 multiply by 6 plus 60. Is that what you are saying? Yes. Yes. Equals X. And the answer is? 71.76. Answer is 71.76. Seven six, which is option one. Okay, just give me a sec. Okay, which is option one. Okay, so moving to the next exercise. Given the information, which one of the following statement is incorrect? You, uh, because this might take you a while. Remember that if it's the probability of Z less than a value, it will be the value you see on the table. If it is the probability of Z greater than a value, it will be one minus the value you see on the table. If it's in between, it will be the probability of Z less than B, which is the second part minus the probability of Z less than A, which is the first part. And those will be the values you find on the table. So go through this. I'm going to give you at least five minutes on this one to answer question number, option number one up until option five, and then we'll come back. Remember to use the, the probability table because this one says you need to find the probability of every value. And don't keep quiet if you are lost, you can ask a question in between.
I will win it. If I say, yes, do you still want extra more time? Um, I'm done. Okay. Others? Uh, there are two options on the chat. Uh, I'm not sure if it's for the same question. One is option three and the other one is option four. So it means we're getting two different answers. Are we, are you guys still busy? Or can we do the feedback? Are you done? Talk to me. So none of you wants to talk to me except one person who said they were done. Okay, so what is the probability that Z is less than one minus 1.52? It's 0 0.0643. So this is correct. Yes. Agree, everybody? Yes. That you okay. Nobody okay. says anything. Oh, what yes, is, one is correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. so what is the probability that Z is less than 1.48? Okay. 0.9306. Are we all in agreement? Yes, in agreement. Number three, the probability that Z is greater than minus 0 0.43. Remember, you will go and find the value on the table and subtract it from one. Is this correct? Yes. Yes, also correct. So this is correct. Find the probability of Z greater than 0 0.74. You also, on this one, you need to say 1 minus the value you find on the table. Is this correct? No. Correct. And the person with the TV mute themselves. Uh, oh, they can mute the TV. Thank you. Uh, so this is the incorrect one because this is the value you find on the table. You will need to go and say one minus this value. It should give you the probability of that. So then it means also this is correct. The probability of between. So the only incorrect one is option number four. Anyone who does not know or understand how we got there, speak now. I got lost. Where did you get lost? I was trying. Um, <clears throat> I was trying to calculate the f the first option. Yes. So. The Z value is minus 1.52, right? Yes. And then since the formula is X minus the mean. OK, I will stop you there. OK. This is already the Z value. So it means you already, they already calculated Z of X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. They already calculated this for number one. The, the answer they got was 
minus 1.52. So this is that, is the, is that formula. Oh. They already calculated it. You oh. only use the Z value if they ask you what is the probability that X is equals to whatever the value is. Then you use that. So as long as you see a Z value, you just know that they already calculated it. You use the value of Z to go to the table. You just use these values to go to the table. Okay, I see now. All right. Thank you. Others, whoever is the lost, speak now. But just on the last one, on, on number five, that is the the probability where you the probability of B minus the probability of A. Yes. So on the last one, you were going to say the probability. You were going to go find the probability of Z two point three four on the table, and you're going to subtract the probability of Z less than. 2.10 on the table. So we're okay. going to first go find that probability and write it down and minus we go find the probability and write it down and that should give you 0, 0.083. Okay, thank you. Right. Next. A psychologist has been studying eye fatigue using a particular measure which she administers to students after they have worked for an hour writing on a computer. On this measure, she has found that the distribution follows a normal curve. Using a normal probability table, what is the probability of students showing a Z score below 1.5? How do we write it in a formula format? So it will be the probability. What are we looking for? The probability of Z. What is below? Less than. Is less than. Or oh, this below? Well, it's less than. Less than 1.5. Similar to what we did previously. Here they give you the Z score. So you just need to go and find the probability. Should be easy, quicker. We have an answer. Option three. Option three is our answer. When we go to the table, we go look for 1.5 on the side. 
1.5 on the side, then we go to 0, 0.00 at the top where they meet, which would be 0, 0.9332. And that is the probability we're looking for. Any question, any query, anyone who is lost, speak now. If you don't know how to read the table or how to find the values, ask. The shaded area under the curve follows this normal distribution curve is equals to, we want to know what is this shaded area? What is the probability of this shaded area? Remember the shaded area represents the probabilities. What is this probability? You are given 0 and 1.5. So it means we're looking for the probability that Z lies between two values, 0 and yeah, I can call it 0 0.00. and 1.25. So you have five minutes. I see a hand. Alistair, uh, do you want to say something? Sorry, I don't have access to the chat, but I wanted to give the answer. Oh. Uh, if you want to give an answer, you just unmute and and say it if you don't have access to the chat. Okay, I, I got option number four. For the last question. Well, for exercise seven. Okay. Okay, how do we answer this? We say, we find the probability of Z less than 1.25 minus the probability of Z less than 0 0.00. What is the probability of Z less than 1.25? And what is the probability of Z zero zero zero? Zero point five zero zero. Zero point five. Zero, zero. 
And the answer here should be? 0 0.3944. which is option number four. Happy? Are we all happy? Can we move on? Yes, we can. Okay, moving to the next question. Sorry, I need to, I clicked on the wrong. Okay, given Z follows a normal distribution with the mean of zero and the variance of one, what is the probability that what is the probability that Z is greater than minus one point four four? You have three minutes. And I guess people who are quick and know what they're doing, they already have the answers. Minus one point four four. Pay attention to the sign. Pay attention to the sign. Pay attention to the sign. I'm talking to you specifically, Karabo. The sign is greater than. Are we done? Do you still need more time? Hello. We good, Liz. We good. Okay, so let's do the answer. So since we're looking for the probability of Z greater than minus 1.44, we need to go find one minus the probability of Z less than minus 1.44. What is the probability of Z less, less than minus 1.44? 0, 0,079. 0, 0,079. And that gives us? 0, 0,9251. Which is option three. Moving on to the next. Unless if there's anyone who wants to comment or ask a question. Or... Okay. None. If X is normally distributed. If X is normally distributed with the mean of 50, the variance of 40, your 
the mean of 50, the variance of 25, the probability of B greater than, you know, the probability of X greater than B is 0, 0,017, and the probability of A between, uh, X between A and B is 0, 0,10. What is the value of A? So what do we need to do here? We need to find Z first. We need to find? We don't need to find Z. Um, do you find the probability of um, X is, is greater than B? They did give you that. We need to find yes, the probability B. of Z probability. less than less, than, less B. than B, which will be one minus one zero point zero one seven. Yes, which will be one minus zero point one minus one seven. Zero one seven which is how much? 0 0.9830. 0 0.9830. 30. Yes, so if I have that, then I need to go find the Z value for B, isn't it? B. That's step number one. Is that done? Mm. Step number two, we need to go find the Z value for B. We need to go and take this value that we have there yes. and go we'll find that Z value. So go find the Z value and tell me what is it. Uh, one question. Yes. There, now at number one, is it probably a probability of Z or X that's less than B? This is the probability of X is, is greater than B, which is the same thing as because for for you to find this the probability of x greater than b you will convert your x value to a z a value i'm not going to use a b i'm going to use a, a value of a which is the same as 0 comma 0 one seven mean one and the same thing. Oh, okay, I see. I see now. Because remember, we take the the B value. We go find. We substitute it into this question. It's not gonna be where A is. A represent X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. We do this because we take it from the X question, we go find the probability of Z less than to go find the probability. In a way, we are finding the same thing. Okay, got it? Okay, got it. Yeah, so now, did you go find the probability of Z on the table and then locate the Z values? So it will be on the positive side of the table. I got two comma one two ninety eight three zero. It's two comma one two, ne? Two comma twelve. So our Z corresponds to two comma one two. Do you know how we got that? Do you want me to show you how we got it? Are you happy to find it yourself? Uh, please you show. go inside the table, on the positive side of the table, go look inside the table, 
for 0, 0,9830. Then you go out to your left and go out to your top of the table and read those values. The first digit before the comma and the second digit after the comma on the left and the last digit at the top. Combine both, they should give you 2,12. Found it? Happy? Talk to me. Happy? Yes, happy. Happiness. Okay, so now we have found the value. Uh, we actually haven't found the value of B. We found the value of Z for the B value. We still need to go find B. B is X. So we need... Uh, actually, we didn't even have to go find the value of the Z value because we can take... We know if this is the case. If that is the case, we know that is the that probability of Z lies between the value of A and B in this instance e. will give us 0, 0,110. And we know that this is the same as the probability of Z. Minus Z, Z, Z less than B, Z, minus the probability e. of Z less than, than A e. is equals to 0, 0,110. We didn't have to do yeah, so, number two, so. Yeah, so what I did is I took that um and that 0 0.9830 and substituted it yes. into this one. So you substitute it here, minus the probability of Z less than A is equals to 0 0.110. And then we need to make this the subject of the formula because it's negative. I'm going to put it to the left anyway. So I'll take probability of Z less than A and put it to this side, move it over and move 0, 0,11 to this side. So you'll have 0, 0,98. Three zero minus because it is positive on this side, we bring it this side, it becomes negative 0, 0,110. And what do we get? Um, 0 0.8730. So the pro I can write it here again. The probability of Z less than A is 0, comma. the answer that we get here is 0, comma. 8730. Are we all happy? So, we have the probability of Z less than A. The next step is for us to go find the Z value that corresponds to this A value there. Remember, this is not the A that we're talking about here. I could have put this as a question mark, the Z value here as a question mark, or used another letter. So, this A here is not this A. This is an A observation raw score. This is A that represent the Z score. So now let's go find this. Go to the positive side of the table and look for 0, 0,8730 and go find the Z values. It's 1.8730. So you will find it, it will be 0, 0,8729. We'll use the 29, 8.729. We'll use the Z values that correspond to that, which is 1,14. Four. So we go here, we go find that our Z, our A, so that will be Z less than 1, comma. Uh, am I doing it right? 1, comma, 1, 4. Yes. And that will be 1, comma, 1, 4. 
And since we have that, then we can calculate Z is equals to X minus the mean divide by the standard deviation. So our X here is the A that we are looking for. The X is the real A that we are looking for that we need to find here. So substitute the value and solve for A. So our Z, we did find it. It was 1.14. Our A is what we're looking for. Let me make my sigma smaller. Minus our mean. They gave 50. us the mean is 50. Divide by our standard deviation. Mm -hmm. They gave us the variance. So we need to calculate the standard deviation, which is the it's square root. Fine of 25, which is equals to 5. Our A will be equals to, so if we do it all at once, it will be 1,14 times 5 plus, plus 50 is equals to A. I ran out of space. Just do the calculation. What is the 55. A? 55.7. Is? 55.7. 55.7. And that's how you will find the value of A. Any question, any query, any comment? We should be at the end of uh, normal distribution questions. Given that Z is standardized normal variable, the variance of Z will be equals to is it greater than two? Is it always greater than one? Is it equals to one? Is it equal to zero? Cannot be calculated. What is the answer? Option two. Uh, Actually, option three. Option three is the correct answer because normal distribution is distributed with the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. The variance will also be one because the, the square of one is one. Okay, let me see how many slides still have. Still have a couple for normal distribution. Okay, suppose that X is normally distributed with the mean of 100 and the standard deviation of 20. The probability X greater than 145 is. So they are asking you to find the probability that X it's greater than 145. So you need to go find the probability that Z is greater than X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. You have three minutes.
Okay, we have the answer. Are we winning? Yes. Do you want extra time? I'm done. Okay. What is the answer? So what is our X? X is what is in the question. Our mean, they gave us it's 100. Standard deviation? 20. So 145 minus 100 is 45 divided by 20. You get 2.25. 2.25. 2 2.25, because it's greater than we'd say one minus the value we're going to find on the table, isn't it? That's correct. And when you go to the table, the table value is 0 0.9878. One minus zero point eight nine eight nine eight seven eight nine eight seven eight and that is equals to option number two zero point zero one double two which is that any question No question. Find the value of A. So this we do the same as what we did previously. So because this is the Z of less than A, you must go find the Z value. And once you have the Z value, you must come and substitute into the formula and calculate the value of A again. They say A. So. And you are given the variance so you can find the standard deviation, which is the square root of the variance, which is equals to 4. This one you have two minutes. Are we winning? Uh, since it's 15-15, you must go to the negative side of the table. 
because the negative side of the table contains the smaller values of probabilities. Okay, are we done? What is your Z value? Hello? Negative 1.03. Minus 1.03 equals our A is what we're looking for. Our mean is that our standard deviation is equals to four. Minus 1.03 times four plus 30 is equals to A. Therefore, our A is how much? Twenty-five point eight eight. Anyone who's still lost on how we do this, how we go and find the probability on the table and then locate the Z value. Are you fine finding this information or doing this on your own? and there is no answer, okay? So let's do normal uh, sampling distribution. Questions in the last hour that is left. Uh, other than that, if we have extra time at the end, we can come back to question 13 because it's the last one on the normal distribution that we didn't do. Okay. Sampling distribution, the same thing that we've learned with normal distribution we're going to still learn. Remember, yeah, the formula is Z, sample mean, minus the population mean, divide by the standard error, which is your population standard deviation divide by the square root of N. Or if it's for the proportion, let's go to the next slide. If it's for the proportion, it will be the Z, of the sample proportion minus the population proportion divided by the standard error, which is the population proportion one minus the population proportion divided by N. And if P is not given, they would give you X divided by N in order for you to be able to calculate P. Proportions, it's decimals or percentages. To know that you're doing the mean, Sampling distribution for the mean, you will be given the population standard deviation. You will be given the mean. You will be given the sample mean in the question. For the proportion, so this is for the mean. For the proportions, we always know that they will give us the P, the sample proportion, or the population proportion. And also this, will, there will be N, there will be N, which is your sample size. But you just need to know, to identify the two, to know whether are you doing the proportion or are you doing the mean. So for proportion, you will see things like decimals, like zero point, uh, so decimals, or you will see percentages. And that will tell you that you are, you are answering questions on proportions okay so with that being said there is your first question so what is the probability that a sample proportion of children with as uh, asd in a special needs school is at least 0 0.7 in a formula mathematical formula what does at least mean 
does it mean this or does it mean that in terms of probabilities? Is it greater than or is it less greater, than? Greater than. It will be greater than. So then it means they're asking you to find the probability that P, because they're talking about sample proportion, P is greater than 0, 0,7. Therefore, you need to go find the probability that Z is greater than P minus proportion, some propo, uh, population proportion divided by the standard error, which is the population proportion one minus population proportion divided by N. So do the calculation you have. Let me give you five minutes.
Are we done? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so let's do this. Sorry, my bad. What is our P always in the question? 0, 0,7 minus our population proportion? 0, 0,74. Divide by the standard error, which is 0, 0,74 times 1 minus 0, 0,74 divide our mm -hmm. n it's 100 0, 0,4 7 minus 0, 0,74 is 0, 0,04. Mm -hmm. Minus, minus 0, 0,04. Minus 0, 0,04. And the standard error? 0, 0,04. Did I write it right? 0, 0,0439. Okay. What is the answer? Minus 0. Comma nine one. Are we all in agreement? Yes. Okay, so therefore it's one minus the probability zero comma minus zero comma nine one. So when we go to the table, one minus zero comma one nine. When we go to the table, what do we get? Zero comma one eight one four. Zero comma one eight one four. And the answer is zero comma eight one eight six. Zero comma one eight one eight. And that's how you answer the question. Any questions? If none. I'm going to give you three minutes just to look at these questions and then we will do look at them individually and then we will do a recap just now.
Okay. Are we are we done looking at the questions? So let's uh, let's do this. Let's do this. So this is also um, proportion questions. Okay, so number one, is it correct? Yes. So you need to you need to calculate P by finding X divided by N because they gave you the number of respondents. So your proportion will be your if it's they are both split yes and no let's say let's take the yes your sample proportion will be 32 divided by 64 and that will give you 0 0.5 which is correct number two calculate the standard error so you needed to go and find the standard error, which is one minus divide by N. So our population proportion is 0 0.75 times one minus 0 0.75 divide by our yeah. N of 64. And is it correct or incorrect if you calculate it? Incorrect. Is it incorrect? Yes. What do you get as a standard error? 0, 0,0541. 0, 0,0541. Oh, yes. Okay. So then it means that is the incorrect one. Uh, which makes that is the correct one. The sample proportion of 0, 0,5 is the same as a half. It's correct. The probability of the proportion less than 0. So yeah, they're asking you to find the probability. So now we need to find the probability of less than Z less than P minus the probability divided by the standard error, I am going to put it like that because we did calculate the standard error. PZ less than our standard, our P is 0, 0,5 minus 0, 0,75. Divide is by 0, our standard error. 0, 0,65 P. Oh, P is 0, 0,65. I'm, I'm taking the first. Which is 0, 0,055. Five, So what is our Z value? 0, 0,65 minus 0, 0,75 will give us 0, 0,10 minus 0, 0,10 and divide by that by 0, 0,045. What do you get? 
minus one comma eight four eight four. One comma eight four. Eight four. So it's the same as one comma eight five because yes. we need to keep. Then you go to the uh, table. table on the negative side. You go look for one uh, minus one comma eight five. So and the answer is zero comma zero three two two two. Which is correct. And that's how you will answer the question. Let's move to the next one. Find the probability of between. We already, or oh, we didn't calculate that. So you need to go find P minus Okay, so calculate the probability of between. So we we actually did calculate uh, number A, which we found that it was zero minus zero comma nine one. So do the other part. Calculate the second part. When we have the answer, you can shout it out so I can write it. Excuse me, ma'am. 
Shouldn't the yes. sample size aim be 100? Sorry, yes, we should be. And it's 100. I got 2.28. I also get 2.28. Okay, so that it's 2.28. 2 so now you must go to the table and go find Z of less than 2.28. 2.28 and subtract the value you find on Z less than minus 0 0.91. Mm -hmm. So I get zero point eight zero seven three. I also got the same one. Okay, so what is the value for 2.28? What is the 0. 0. 9, 0. 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, And for minus 0 0.91? 0 0.1814. And when you subtract one from the other, you get? 0 0.8073. It's not the... So it's not one of these answers. So it means from where I got this question, they got all their answers wrong there. So you must write it correctly. So the answer that should be here is 0, 0,8073. That is our answer that we need to get. This is for the mean. We were dealing with the proportion all along. So now we are given the standard deviation, the mean, and they want you to find what is the mean of a sampling distribution and what is the standard deviation of a sampling distribution. Remember this, the standard deviation of a sampling distribution? It's sigma, which is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Remember the mean of a population mean is the same as the mean of a sampling distribution. We have the answer.
option four. Okay. So what is the the mean of a population standard deviation? Will be the same one point three one. One point three one. And the standard deviation. Zero point zero eight. Uh, the question is missing the sample n. So our n is 4. Zero point zero four divided by 2. Uh, zero point zero eight divided by 2 is 0, 0,02. So which makes it Um, you send it zero comma zero four. No, it's it's zero comma zero four because eight divided by two is four. I sorry, I divided by four instead of two. I kept on saying two, but I divide by four. So the answer here is. Option number four. Now calculate the probability. So based on the information that you got there, so you have already 0, 0,04. Now we need to calculate because we're using the same information. Calculate the probability that the mean is less than 1.28. So therefore we need to find the probability that Z is less than the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the standard error so for some of this, it's easy because we already calculated the standard error. Our mean is in the question 1.28 minus our mean of 1.31 1. divided by the standard error. We calculated it. I'm not going to ask you to calculate it again. What is the Z value? Negative zero. Negative zero comma seven five. Negative zero comma seven five. So go to the negative side of the table and look for negative zero comma seven five. It's zero comma two two six six, which is option number one. <clears throat> Next. What is the standard error?
It's 0, 0,05. Okay, so we first need to solve it. Uh, standard deviation is 10. It's 10. And the square root of n, our n is? It's 200. I made a mistake. 10 divided by the square root of 200. Remember, this is the sample size, which is our n. This is our standard deviation. This is our mean. And this is our population. Our population size, capital letter N. 0, 0.707. 0, 0.707. 0, which is... Option two. Okay. Consider the population mean of 70, standard deviation of six, and a sample size of 36. What is the probability of between? Uh, you don't have to do it the same way as I've been doing. You can calculate these things outside, separate. So let's do that. The first one, which is Z of 70.5 minus the mean of 70, because we know that our equation is Z of sample mean minus population mean divided by the standard error, which is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of N. So we can just do that. Divide by the standard deviation of 6 divided by the square root of n. n is 36. And you do the same z. 71.5 minus 70 divided by 6 divided by the square root of 36. And you get your answer. Present being, I want to use this site to do the question. Once we get the value of our Z. Between 0 0.5 and 1.5. Because 70.5 minus 70 is 0 0.5, 6 divided by the square root of 36 is 6 divided by 6, which is equals to 1, and that will give us that. And at the top, we have 71.5 minus 70, which is 1.5 divided by, by 1, which is 1.5. So therefore, the site it will be between 0 0.5 and 1.5. So we need to find, to go to the table, 
and find the probability that Z less than 1.5 minus the probability of Z less than 0 0.5. For 1.5, what is the value on the table? 0 0.9332 or 335? 332. 332. And for 0 0.5? 0 0.6915. Minus 0 0.6915. And if we do the calculations, Zero point two four one seven. I'm going to assume that that was supposed to be the right answer from the question. Okay, uh, and I think the time ran out of on us. So there is question 21, 22, 23. So only three, que three questions that are left, which I think you can do on your own as well. So this first one is asking you to calculate the probability of a sample mean at least. So you will go and find the probability of X bar greater than 67.5, which you will use the formula Z is equals to X mean minus the population mean divided by the standard error. You will use that formula to answer the question. Next one, which is the, here you're going to validate each statement. The first one is to calculate the standard error, which is the standard error. The second one, they want you, if X is that, what is the Z equals to? So this one, they just want you to calculate Z, X bar, minus mean, divide by square root of N, and validate if that is the correct answer. The next one, they want you to find the probability of between using the same the second one, or oh, the fourth one, they want you to calculate the probability of above, which will mean greater than, and for more than, also the same, more than 132, you also do calculate that, and find out which one of the statement is incorrect. The last question, they are asking you the, to calculate the standard error. So they should be quick and easy for you to do. And that would have concluded today's session. Any comment, any query, any question? Sorry, ma'am. I yes. have a question. And my question was um, the difference between um, population sample proportion and sample proportion. Would it be that if they say population sample proportion, it is the proportion relative to the entire sample? 
and then if they say sample proportion, it is the proportion between the sample that we had taken from the population. It will be the the population proportion will be the proportion from the population. It's your proportion of from the original population, whatever they because remember, let's say for example, ne? on your population you have a thousand a thousand people in your population and you want to calculate the proportion that uh, uh, let's use those who who tested positive for COVID and those who didn't test positive who, who tested negative so here you will calculate let's say uh only a hundred tested positive and the 900 post tested negative. So to calculate the proportion of positive, it will be 100 divided by a thousand. And that will give you the population proportion. A sample proportion from the same population, we select a sample of 600 people. So this is our sample and that is the population from this sample we also get people who tested negative uh, just give me a sec Okay, so, uh, uh, so there are people who tested negative. Let's say from here, uh, we say only 50 from the sample that we selected tested negative. Therefore, there was, sorry, what am I saying? Negative and positive. So 50 tested positive and 550 tested negative. So here we will calculate this, the sample proportion of positive by saying 50 divided by 600. And that is where the difference is, uh, the difference between population proportion and sample proportion. So a sample proportion will be from the same population, how much is, but when you calculate the proportion, remember it will be the sample proportion of observation or outcome that satisfies that um, from the sample. You don't use the population, but you use the sample. Oh, okay. Okay, I get it. I get it. That, yeah. Okay. So I, Thank I you. Just, yes, I just also want to correct this one question because I think I gave you the wrong hint on this question. Uh, this question is a proportion question. And this is where also you need to pay very careful attention when you read the question. This is a proportion question. So the, the standard error here they are looking for is the standard error for the proportion, which is the square root of your population proportion, one minus population proportion divided by the standard error. Okay, any other question that you have? If there are no questions, thank you for coming through and enjoy the rest of your 